So I've just recently gotten into um, these videos that uh, there are lots of atheists and Christians debating the existence of God and evolution and all this stuff. And I, again, I, I find it absolutely fascinating. So I guess this video is uh, directed towards both, both sides, um, the atheists and the theists. Uh, first, um, I believe, personally, uh, that God is in everything and everyone, and that to deny God is, uh, is like denying what is obvious, what's right in front of your face. Now, that's, that's just my uh, personal uh, opinion or belief, although I am trying to let go of all my beliefs because I believe, <laughs> I believe that beliefs, in essence, keep our mind prisoner. And when our minds are prisoners, it's, it's difficult to be open to other people's ideas and uh, opinions, uh, which can potentially help us to grow and evolve as spiritual beings. Anyway, so my advice to atheists is if you truly want to seek the answers to the questions that you pose, you might want to consider um, seeking them out in God. And to the Christians, I would like to say that if you truly want to seek the answers that you are asking, then you might want to seek the answers in God as well. So if you're still with me, if you haven't hit the stop button, uh, in order for me to express uh, my, uh, my view of what's going on and uh, my perception of God, I have to find something that we can all agree on, that we can all, uh, you know, perceive as true. So I have here uh, a coin, a quarter, we can all agree. It's a quarter, it has a head side and a tail side, uh, you know, regardless of whether you're a creationist or evolutionist or whatever, that's true. So my question is, which side of this quarter is more right? or more valuable. Exactly. They're both two sides of the same thing. Get it? You see, in my perception, in my view, it's, it's God that holds these two sides together. It's God that makes it whole. It's God that gives it value. If you were to separate these two sides, then neither would have any value. It might be pretty neat to just kind of look at, though, but you can't really do anything with it. So, <clears throat> in all the holy books, in all the books on science and evolution, uh, it, it has, it, it essentially comes down to uh, information. That's what's there. Information, stories, theories. Um, to, to truly know God, to truly experience God, it's like, it's like chocolate. Um, I can give you a lot of information on, on chocolate as to uh, how it's grown, how it's made, uh, the different varieties of chocolate. Um, I can probably present you with scientific research on the, the, the chemical uh, changes that happen in your brain as you eat chocolate. But until you truly experience chocolate, you will never know what it is to taste chocolate. Now, I can present you with this chocolate. I, I could present it to you wrapped in a little silver wrapper or in a little gold wrapper. Or I can sh show you all the, the different types of chocolate that are out there. But again, that's just information. That's just pretty pictures and all that stuff. So if you truly want to experience God, then you have to delve into making it a part of you, taking it in. Mm. Mm. I love chocolate. How can I make this a practical application? How can I 
help you to experience God? Well, first, perhaps we should take the word God out of it, because God has many different connotations and very various meanings, and it brings up a lot of stuff for a lot of people. So let's just take a step back and, and take a breath. We all breathe. Everyone breathes. Even the wind, you can hear the wind and it almost sounds like the breath, or the waves of the ocean could sound like the breath. The flow of traffic on a highway in the distance sounds like the breath. And if you were to look in any of the holy books, like the Quran or the Old Testament or the New Testament, and you were to take the words that are the name of God, that essentially can't be pronounced because forbidden or impossible or whatever. If, if you were to spell the sound of your breath, what would it spell? Would it sound like Allah? Would it sound like Yeshua? Would it sound like Yahweh? It's like inhale and exhale. That is God. That is the name of God. That is the essence of God. If you're depressed, if you're hurting, if you're miserable, you got to admit that if you breathe, it feels good to breathe. It's grounding. It helps calm you. You know, but your, your breath does everything that, I don't know, that God's supposed to do, right? So... Yeah, I mean, I'm not uh, trying to uh, tell you that you're wrong or change anybody's beliefs, whether you're Christian or atheist or whatever. I find that what, what everyone has to say is quite fascinating. Uh, and it helps me to um, free my mind uh, from my beliefs and, and question, because I think it's important to question and continue to delve deeper. So if anybody out there truly wants to prove that God exists or doesn't exist, just sit and, and take a few breaths. Because uh, I think the, the only real answers that you're going to find are within you. Um, the books that you might read might help you along. They might provide t the tools to help you get there. But it, it, it can't really take you there. Only you can go there. You know what I mean? So, take a breath. Take, take about five to ten minutes in the morning, and five to ten minutes at night, and just kind of sit quietly and just, just breathe. And just focus entirely on your breath. And, and see how that might help you find the answers that you seek. Uh, so, I'm going to... I'm going to end it there. I would love to hear your comments. I would love to hear what you have to say. Um, I find this topic quite fascinating. And yeah. So, have some chocolate and breathe.